Our next explication is about bracing rectangular frameworks. Sounds a bit exotic and unusual, so let's look into what this means. So the idea is that you have a rectangular framework, like a metal construction, but such a construction is unstable, so you want to fortify it to make it rigid. For example, you have something like this. And now I can distort this uh, thing by maybe pulling this part down and uh, pulling this part down. And that's, of course, no good if this brace is supposed to support some structure in a building or something. So I want to make sure that all angles at all times remain right angles. So what I do is I add uh, diagonal bars and now my uh, graph or my uh, metal construction is rigid. Well, okay, so what's more to say about this? Well, now I added four uh, bars. Ideally, I want to add as few as possible. You can probably convince yourself that the last one was unnecessary and that already this uh, metal construction is rigid. So how do you determine when a metal construction is rigid uh, and how do you find the minimal possible uh, bracing? A bracing is this operation of adding diagonal bars. These are the questions that we uh, want to solve. Uh, just a small remark, uh, for the purpose of this application, it doesn't matter if I add the diagonal one way or the other. Adding any diagonal to one square will make sure that this square stays rigid. So let's look at this problem in greater detail. And let's look at this example where we have already added uh, the braces and see if this is good enough or not. So one observation we make is that when you add a brace in position ij, so position ij means that you are in row i and column j. So for example, this one is in position 1, 2, because it's in row 1 and column 2. When you add a brace there, you force that whole column to be perpendicular or at right angle to that whole row. And remember in the end, you want all columns to be uh, perpendicular to all rows. So uh, this is the key principle that we want to add as few uh, braces as possible and every brace we add ensures that the column and the row where this brace is stay at right angle to each other. The mathematical model might be a bit surprising. So although the, uh, br uh, the framework itself looks like a graph, that's not the graph we will actually use. We will construct a bipartite graph where the vertices are the rows and columns so one vertex for each row, one vertex for each column. And uh, you draw an edge between a given row and a given column if there is a brace in the intersection of those two. So let's look at how this example works. So here you have vertices C1, C2, C3 colored in red and vertices R1, R2, and R3 colored in black. And so between in C1 and R1, I have a brace, R1 with C2, but not with C3, same with R2. And then I have R3 and C3 connected. And this bipartite graph is supposed to tell me something. Before we delve into what it actually tells us, let's look at this brace. Forget about the mathematics. Do you think it is rigid or not? Pause and think. Well, it seems to me intuitively that rows 1 and 2 will stay at right angle with columns 1 and 2, 
and row three will stay at right angle with column three, but there is really nothing uh, connecting the rigidity in this position and in this position. And this is somehow reflected in the fact that this part stands by itself. It's not connected to this other part. And indeed, what we observe is that if the graph is not connected, the framework is not rigid. To be precise in what I said, note that here, column number three is not at all forced to stay at right angle with row one or row two, because there is nothing that, uh, it has nothing to do with these rows. But also, if the graph is connected, then uh, every row will be at right angle with every column, and then the framework is rigid. Let's look at how this works. This is less trivial than it sounds. So assume we have the following network or framework. And assume I have put braces here, here, and here. So the thing I suggested in the beginning. So now we have columns one and two and rows one and two. So if I draw my graph, the bipartite graph, it is by the way bipartite because by construction of the graph, I never draw any edge between columns or between rows. All edges go between a row and a column. So here row one, um, is attached to these two and column one also to row two. So how do I know that this is enough? Well, the only thing that is not clear from the construction is I'm not sure that column two is orthogonal to row two. So my question is, will column two be perpendicular, orthogonal, the same thing, to row number two? Well, what do I know? I know that column two is perpendicular to row one. And I know because I have this thing. I also know that row one is perpendicular to column one. And I know that column one is perpendicular to row two. So this chain of orthogonality or perpendicularity forces column two to be orthogonal to row two. So uh, when you think about it, this just means in the graph that I have a, an edge between C2 and R1 and an edge between R1 and C1 and between C1 and R2. And so I have a path between C2 and R2 and that's exactly what I need. So connectedness corresponds precisely to the framework being rigid. But remember I had a different question. I had the question about minimality. So I don't want to add too many braces. Well, if the graph is connected and has a cycle, then I can remove edges without disconnecting the graph. Interpreting this in the term of my uh, metal work, I can remove braces corresponding to edges in my bipartite graph without losing rigidity. Rigidity corresponds to connectedness by the previous point. So this leads us to the following conclusion, that a braced framework is rigid if and only if the corresponding bipartite graph is connected, and the bracing is minimal, meaning I cannot remove any brace without uh, losing rigidity, if and only if the graph is a tree. And this uh, answers the question. So in this case, I have no cycles in this graph. It is a tree, so this is a minimal bracing. Whichever brace I remove will uh, make my framework susceptible to being distorted. And this is the solution to this uh, bracing of rectangular frameworks. You draw the corresponding bipartite graphs where braces correspond to edges, and you check that this graph is a tree.